Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, yesterday I put out the first part of my Zetetic Tides and there was some confusion about how the tidal bulges on both sides of the earth actually worked. And let me um, just go over them again real quick to try and clear up some confusion. I don't believe that I presented it as well as I could have. And um, I think that I'm going to give it another try here. Now, here we have the earth. And out here we have the moon. Now, if you look at the center of the earth, there is a gravitational attraction between the center of the earth and the center of the moon. Now, there is such a thing called a barycenter, which is shifted a little bit towards the moon, and that's the actual place of the center of gravity in this system. But for simplicity's sake alone, we're just going to talk about the center of the earth. Now, the other thing that I'm going to just take out of this equation is going to be the, uh, the force of gravitational acceleration. That's uniform throughout this entire Earth. And it really doesn't add anything to this discussion of tides. So let's go ahead and take it from this. Now, if you look at this system from outside uh, in space out here and just a detached look at it, you will see that there's a certain amount of gravitational force from the center of the Earth towards the Moon. If you look at the side of the Earth nearest the Moon on this same line, the gravitational force from that spot towards the Moon will be a little bit larger because it is closer to the Moon. So, if you compare it to the center of the Earth and make this your frame of reference, there's a little bit more force pulling on the Earth from out here than there is here. Now, the land will bulge up slightly underneath that in response to that increased acceleration, but more importantly, the water will bulge up towards the Moon. Now, let's have a look over at this spot right here on the far side of the Earth, but again, in line with the center of the moon and the center of the earth. Notice that there's a certain amount of force right here, and I had that just arbitrarily done as half an inch. And out here, I've got an amount of force that's about a quarter of an inch. So it's less here than it is here. As a result, what happens to this water that is out here above this spot on the earth by inertia, it wants to stay at a steady acceleration. So it's going to actually lag behind the acceleration from the center of the Earth. And as a result, we're going to get a little bulge of water out here as the water just kind of lags behind because this is accelerating more than this is accelerating here. And in this frame of reference from the center of the Earth, it's almost as if there's an acceleration going in the opposite direction. That's why we get this little bulge from this, this tidal force. However, that's not the main reason that we have this bulge on the Earth. So let's take a look at this spot right up here. Okay? Now, this will have approximately, a little bit less, but approximately the same attraction to the Moon as the center of the Earth does. But it's going to actually be directed towards the Moon. So it's actually directed downward a little bit. Likewise, on this side of the Earth, the direction of the force is going to be, again, towards the Moon, but it'll be angled slightly upward. It won't be directly straight out. Now, when you're dealing with a vector, such as this one down here, where we've got a vector going towards the moon along this coordinate system that we've set up at the center of the Earth, we're actually going to have a component of that vector that's going to go towards the moon, and we're going to have a component of that vector that goes upward like that. So, if you look at the water above these spots, they're going to have a, comp a vector that goes down towards the center of the Earth, like that. 
and as you work your way around the side, you will continue to have vectors going downward, like so. Plus, there's also going to be vectors going in this direction, like that. The end result is water is going to be moved in this direction and in this direction up towards this bulge. And that bulge is going to get larger. Now let's look on the other side of the Earth. Say we have a spot right here. Like so. These spots are going to have vectors of attraction that are pointed towards the center of the moon. And like on the opposite side, each of these little vectors will have a downward vector going towards this center of Earth, the center of moon line. Uh, once again, the result will be water will be moved downward from the poles towards the equator, and this bulge will increase. So, let's think about what this means for the tides. The tides will be largest over these bulges, and as we recall, they're directly under the moon between 29 north and 29 south latitude. And the water and the tides will be smallest up at the poles. And that's exactly what we see on the map. I hope that makes it a little bit easier to understand. I'm sorry that it wasn't presented as well as it could have been. And I've put a link to a PBS special on this in the description in case you need some further clarification. But later on today, I'm going to put out part two of my Zetetic Tides, but I wanted to go ahead and put this hot fix out real quick first because there were some comments related to it. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan, and I'll see you later on this afternoon with Zetetic Tides part two and where we will discuss some of the other factors that come into play with tides, such as land masses, the ocean floor, and the Coriolis effect from the rotation of the Earth.